All right, I'll get us. We'll get started here. So thanks everybody for coming on. This is Ed Crow. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, today we're gonna we're gonna talk about Medicare supplement underwriting and commissions. Uh, a couple things before we get into that, though. Um, we do record all our webinars, so this will be recorded. Uh, we'll put it on YouTube. Uh, if you want to watch any of our recordings, um, you can go to YouTube, uh, or you can Google search YouTube Crow and Associates, or in the URL, I'll just put in at Crow Medicare, and our YouTube channel will come up, and all the webinars are on there. We also, however, the today's webinar will be emailed to you. So for future reference, if you want to watch any of our webinars but you can't make the time of when we have it, just register yourself. You don't have to attend and you'll get an email of the recording. Um, the YouTube channel is nice because once in a while I will do when there's a topic that I feel needs to be hit. Like recently we've had a lot of people asking about annuity rate watch because we provide it for free. If you've never used it, it's it's pretty awesome Like as far as looking for rates for MIGAs fixed, indexed, uh, running income riders. Um, and everybody that works with us has it for free, but I was getting a lot of questions about it, how do you access it. So I did a webinar um, a couple days ago and uh, put it on YouTube. I made it sound like there was an audience, but it was really just me sitting like at home in the morning, like fending off my kid's pet bird, um, just recording a quick webinar so people could, could uh, you know, we could send it out to people who had the question. So sometimes I'll throw ones on there that I don't do live, for example. Okay, so... Um, if you have any questions, please send them into the question section. I will answer them at the end. I've tried answering them while I do the webinar. I'm not smart enough to do that, um, so we'll do them at the end. So we're going to talk about MedSup underwriting commissions. Um, we're going to talk about GI guaranteed issue states. There's two, kind of four of them. Uh, we'll talk about non-GI states, meaning states that allow underwriting outside of normal enrollment, uh, normal GI periods. Hit the underwriting topic, talk about commissions. Um, talk about overall GIs, um, uh, waiting periods, and again, we record these, and we'll send you the recording, and you can um, you can watch uh, watch the recording on uh, Crow Medicare. Uh, somebody, I don't usually look at the questions as I'm doing this, but somebody said, is this webinar live? Yes, sir. This is a live webinar. Um, so uh, this is a real one. I wouldn't have been able to say that if it wasn't, right? So, all right, so let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, we have states that are guaranteed issue at all times. Uh, the, the concrete, solid ones that are always guaranteed issue absolutely every second of every day are New York and Connecticut. So they're guaranteed issue always. I, usually when I talk to people, I say there's four all-time guaranteed issue states, and I'll toss Mass and Maine in there. That's not technically true. Um, Massachusetts and Maine say that there has to be um, G, a GI period for every supplement at least once annually, once a year, so you can switch, or continuously. Um, it's up to the carriers. So some are at the minimum, some just have GI all year round. Uh, we're going to talk about the birthday rule as well, because that creates a guaranteed issue period. Um, when I say GI, I mean guaranteed issue. And technically that's six states, but we'll, we'll talk about that a little more later. So to start, underwriting in New York and Connecticut on supplements, quite frankly, there's just none. Um, ever. So um, supplements can't be underwritten in New York or Connecticut. It makes it super easy to put people in advantage plans and say, hey, let's start you off with an advantage plan. We'll look at this thing year by year because obviously you could switch during AEP. You could switch during OEP. Uh, and then if you got a special election, which there's a bazillion special elections now, elections now we can switch you all year round. Um, and that's kind of the strategy in Connecticut and New York. The, that's great for the agent, great for the client. The, the problem with this model is it does create adverse selection. Because if you think about it, people sit on an advantage plan until they're while they're healthy, then they get sick and they go on a supplement. Um, and that might sound good, but it creates bad loss ratios for the carriers. And unfortunately, what you see is like what we saw in upstate New York. Um, the two main Medicare supplement companies up there went non-commission. So they don't pay any commission now because they're running so poorly. So that makes us worry about the rest of New York, Connecticut, Mass, Maine. Uh, you worry about adverse selection with the carriers, you know, just running like crap, basically, because, you know, people are just going on supplements when they're sick. You worry about that maybe cascading down and someday being in a situation where, you know, there's a lot of carriers not paying any commissions. But anyway, nothing we can do about it now, but 
that's just uh, something that worries me. Um, you know, people. Some people have nightmares about monsters and stuff. I have one about New York and Connecticut going non-commissionable on supplements. Um, okay, obviously, in a guaranteed issue state, you can write somebody a supplement anytime, anytime, first of any month, all year. But the trick is you got to get them out of the Advantage plan. So, how do you do that? Well, that's where you, during AEP or OEP or with a special election. You use one of those things to write them Part D. That Part D kicks them out of the Advantage plan. So the Advantage plan is free and clear, and then you can write them a supplement in a Part D plan. One thing to think about uh, this, I think if you talk to anybody, it's at one time or another has probably crept up on them, is moving from supplement to Advantage, you have to remind the client to cancel that supplement. So moving from supplement and drug plan to an advantage plan cancels the drug plan because when you put the MA in place, the drug plan gets canceled. It does not cancel that sup. Um, so I strongly suggest that you not only remind people, but you do so in writing. I cannot tell you how many times I've had people come back to me and say, hey, you never told me to cancel that supplement. And I'll be like, actually, I emailed you. So, you know, I'm not going to say I told you so, but I kind of imply that. But um, get it in writing. Um it's it'll save you trouble down the road because you'll get people that you clearly told, hey, you got to cancel this supplement. They won't do it, and then they'll blame you. So New York and Connecticut certainly aren't age based. Uh, they have no underwriting. Um, so you know, just change people whenever you feel like it, um, which is nice because ideally, then you know, a better rated supplement comes out with better rates. You could just go moving people, getting new clients. The problem is with GI states like New York and Connecticut. There's just not much to choose from. You know, the Blues, your Uniteds, um, usually would be the two most competitive carriers, so there's not a lot of back and forth to do. Um, you know, because, but anyway, if, you know, what, what you can do is the plan G to N pitch, if the rates are close enough with the two carriers, um, you can, or if they've got a plan G or N with the carrier with the lowest rate and they want that plan, you can do the high deductible G pitch. Uh, works super well in guaranteed issue states because the G and N premiums are so high, it makes the math on the high deductible G overwhelmingly uh, work. It's almost hard, you know, it, mathematically it just makes total sense. All right, we threw, I threw mass, uh, Maine and Mass in there um, because in Maine, the rule is you can move without underwriting to a plan of equal benefits or lesser benefits all year. So, you know, they can always move. Maybe not necessarily upgrade, but they can move to another carrier. So they get a big rate increase in Maine. They can they can move to somebody else with the same benefits. Um, Mass, the way it's written in Mass is they have to have one guaranteed issue period, uh, open open enrollment guaranteed issue every year for the people. So that at least they can move without underwriting once a year. And since we're talking about Mass, just keep in mind, Massachusetts, Minnesota, and Wisconsin um, are your three non-standardized supplement states. So, you know, all our normal states, we have Plan F, which is only available to those who were medical, Medicare eligible at, um, prior to 1-1-2020, but Plan F, G, N, standard stuff. Mass, Minnesota, and Wisconsin don't follow those rules. They have their own supplements. And again, if I do see a question or two coming in, if they come in, I'll uh, be happy to answer them at the end. So let's go non-guaranteed issue states. And this is sometimes the tricky thing for somebody who's used to writing in a guaranteed issue state. And the non-GI states are basically all the others, again, except for some birthday rule things. Um, but they're subject to medical underwriting. So when somebody wants to switch supplements in a non-guaranteed issue state, an underwritten state, um, they're going to be subject to underwriting when they do it outside of a GI period. You can change supplements all year. And there's in, you know, like, for example, in South Carolina, there's a ton of plans to choose from. New carriers will come into the market and be super competitive on a plan N. Uh, you can call around and, and move somebody then and say, well, there's a lower cost plan now. But when you do that, it's going to be underwritten. So they're going to have to have decent health in order to move. But it is nice in underwritten states because you have so much more to choose from and you have a lot of carriers coming into the market competitively, you know, trying to buy business and it gives you an opportunity to get new clients. So even if you're in a non-GI state, you still have standard guaranteed issue periods. And what this comes from is the government 
Um, I know, see, supplements are regulated by the states, but the government does put some overlying rules in place that everybody has to follow in every state. So, you know, but then the states come in with all kinds of extra rules, and those are, the government rules are uniform across all the states. There's not many government rules. But then the state rules are where it gets confusing because each state might have different, different rules and tweaks on a certain rule. But anyway, everyone is guaranteed issue for the first six months of being 65 and getting Part B. So if you're 65 and you have Part B, for the first six months, you are guaranteed issue on every supplement. It cannot be underwritten. You're also guaranteed issue for up to 63 days after losing group coverage. So always GI in those cases, even in underwritten states. <clears throat> You're guaranteed issue if you move out of the service area or to a different state. So that comes up often. If somebody's in a supplement and that supplement's only offered in a given state and they move to a state that that supplement isn't offered in, um, first of all, they don't have to move out of that supplement. They won't be kicked out. They can stay in it. Um, but if they move to a supplement that is in every state, and they move from one state to another, their GI, um, guaranteed issue, the only difference is the carrier does have the right to adjust the pricing for that state. So um, so you can always always change uh, when you move to a different state, or you can stay in your, your existing plan when you move to a different state. You have a guaranteed issue when somebody has had a supplement but tried an MA for the first time. So somebody turns 65, they go on a Medicare supplement, uh, maybe four or five years goes by, they talk to somebody and they say, the person says, well, you want to try a Medicare Advantage for the first time? If they say yes, then they have a 12-month guaranteed issue period to switch back to a, a supplement and drug plan guaranteed issue first of any month for the first 12 months. It's called a trial right. I just skipped the first one, so I guess I don't know how to follow a list. Um, the other trial right guaranteed issue is if you joined a Medicare Advantage plan when you were first eligible for Medicare. That's the key. The devil's in the details there. Um, just remember, somebody joins a Medicare Advantage plan for the first time, but it's got to be when they're first eligible for Medicare at age 65. They have a 12-month GI to switch back to a supplement and drug plan. Where this doesn't work, this trial right, is let's say somebody was a delayed Part B enrollment. doesn't seem fair, but it's the way it works. They're 67. They get Part B for the first time. They take an Advantage plan. You're thinking to yourself, well, they got a 12-month trial, right? Guaranteed issue period to move back to a supplement and drug plan. They don't um, because they didn't take Medicare when they were first eligible. I've actually gotten that wrong before and uh, with people, unfortunately. And they tend not to like it when you do that. But moving on. Um, so people sometimes think in underwritten states, that during AEP and OEP, supplements are guaranteed issue. They are not. Um, there certainly are some exceptions and some weird rules here and there. But in general, just because it's AEP or OEP, if you're in an underwritten state, that's not guaranteed issue during those election periods to switch to a supplement. Then we get to the birthday rule. So in underwritten states, there's six states. If, if you Technically, it's five, but really, it's I think it's I would call it six. There's six states. Um, that put out what's called a birthday rule. And the birthday rule simply says you've got some time frame before and after your birthday every year to change supplements on a guaranteed issue basis. California, Idaho, Illinois, Nevada, Louisiana, and Oregon are birthday rule states. There's variance in the birthdays with the birthday rule with the time frames, but moral of the story is every year before during or after their birthday, or some variant on that, they have a guaranteed issue period to switch. Then you have something that's similar to a birthday rule, an anniversary rule. That's Missouri and Washington. They're, quite frankly, I think there's a third state, and I just I got lazy and couldn't remember it. But um, anyway, anniversary rule is just on the on the anniversary of your enrollment date. Every year, you have a guaranteed issue right to switch supplements. So. I'm talking about birthday rules, anniversary dates, uh, trial rights, all these ways that you can move somebody in an underwritten state guaranteed issue, even if they're unhealthy. It sounds great, like a great way to get business. The biggest problem with that, though, is most carriers pay little or nothing when using a guaranteed issue outside of being new to Medicare. 
So, got somebody who, let's use this example, um, they have a trial right. You put them on an Advantage plan, uh, nine months later, they want to switch to a supplement. That's a trial right. It's a GI. You're not going to get paid on it. Or if you do, you're going to get paid very little. Um, another scenario on that is three years, depends on the state, but in most cases, three years down the road, somebody's in an Advantage or in a supplement, they want to switch to another one. Um, they're in a birthday rule state or an anniversary state. They use the guaranteed issue to switch. Probably not getting paid on it. Okay, so when do you get full commission in a guaranteed issue or an underwritten state? Well, let's go guaranteed issue first. That's easy. Guaranteed issue states, you get full commission for anything you write. doesn't matter when, really. It's commissionable. Um, the only exception to that is under 65 supplements. Um, you get little to nothing for that. Sometimes it's 1% or 2 or 3%, but that's about it. Um, but in a guaranteed issue state, you're going to get paid when you write somebody a supplement. In a um, guaranteed issue state or an underwritten state, you're always going to get paid if somebody's new to Medicare or new to Part B. So you got somebody turning 65, no problem. You're going to get paid, guaranteed issue, and you're going to get paid in an underwritten state. Somebody is um, dropping work coverage, adding Part B, so they're newly eligible, and they're 68 years old, you're going to get paid because they're new to B. So, um, or you also get paid in an underwritten state if they pass medical underwriting. So if they go through underwriting, pass underwriting, that's going to be commission, full commission on that case. And again, I, I tend not to do generic as many generic webinars that are kind of countrywide because it can kind of make me be off with certain things. There's exceptions in given states. I'm just trying to hopefully give you a good under general understanding of this. I, you know, if you want to look at a specific state, you got to really look at their specific rules, um, especially underwritten states, the rules for like an anniversary, um, you know, election or anniversary GI or birthday rule or what the little intricacies of the rules are. But in general, I, I'm, I think I'm leading you down the right path here. Okay. What don't you get paid on or paid very little on? So most GIs that are not new to Medicare and you use the guaranteed issue election. So moving to another underwritten state from one to another or moving from a GI state to an underwritten state. If you use that GI, because that is a guaranteed issue, moving from one state to another, most likely you're not going to get paid or you're going to get paid very little. Using either the two, two trial rights, you're not going to get paid if you use the GI. Birthday rule GI, not getting paid. Uh, here's the worst one, coming off group coverage, but you're not new to Medicare. So let's say somebody was 67 years old, but they worked for an employer of 15 employees. Well, obviously, it's not, if you're with an employer of less than 20, you don't have a valid waiver for B. Even if you're working, getting coverage through work, you still need to sign up for B. Some people don't know that, but you do. Um, so you might get somebody who worked for a group of 15. He or she was very astute. Even though they're still working, getting coverage through work, they had signed up for B when they turned 65. You use the GI because they're coming off group coverage. Good chance you're not going to get paid on that, or not paid much anyway. The exception to all of this is United American. Now, United American isn't super competitive in a lot of states with like regular plan G or N. They are ridiculously competitive on high deductible G. And United American is one of the few where if somebody's moving in an underwritten state, from an Advantage plan to a United American High G, let's say, using a guaranteed issue, non-new to Medicare, using a GI, United American will still pay you full commission. There are a rare exception, and that's why a lot of agents use them. The negative there is on a high deductible G, you don't get, you know, you don't get paid a lot because the commission is very low. If the people are under 65, you're not going to get paid. Doesn't matter where you are, <clears throat> you're going to either not going to get paid or you're going to get paid very little. Now, let's throw this scenario out for a minute. Um, somebody is in an underwritten state. Um, they have a guaranteed issue election. They're not new to Medicare, but let's say they're using a trial right or they're, they're already on Medicare A and B, but they're coming off group coverage. So they have a guaranteed issue. Now, if you use that guaranteed issue, they're not getting paid. However, strangely, if they go through underwriting, meaning they answer the health questions, even though they have a GI, they answer the health questions on the app and get approved, you get paid on it then kind of makes sense if you think about it. But I've had a lot of people have clients and they'll check off, oh, this person is guaranteed issue. 
in an underwritten state, but then they'll answer the health questions as well. Well, when you do that, that company is usually going to fully underwrite that because you started answering the health questions. Okay, so enough about underwriting and not, you know, all the reasons you don't get paid sometimes. Let's talk about waiting periods. So Medicare supplements are allowed to have up to six, a six-month pre-ex, pre-existing condition waiting period. Uh, keep in mind, though, you still get your Medicare A and B benefits. So I think sometimes people overthink this or panic a little, and they're like, oh, my goodness, they've got these pre-existing conditions. They're not going to be covered for six months. Well, you still got the A and B benefits. It's just the supplement won't cover. Pre-ex waiting periods are not applicable um, when somebody's new to Medicare or new to Part B in using the GI. Then there is no pre-ex in that case. So if you're new to Medicare or using the GI, or any GI for that matter, um, new to Part B, um, you're not going to uh, have pre-ex. Also, pre-existing conditions are waived if you had to ha have had creditable coverage for at least six months prior. So if you had coverage prior, then you're not going to have waiting periods. Now, that coverage that you had, there can't be more than a 63-day break um, between when you had that coverage and when you went on the supplement. If there's more than a 63-day break, then you will be subject to pre-ex. What's considered creditable coverage? Well, the easy one is, and it gets confused, original Medicare is not. I've had pl plenty of people say to me, oh, well, they had Medicare. Well, that doesn't count. So pr uh, credible coverage would be things like group health plans, VA coverage, uh, ACA plans, individual health plans, COBRA, another Advantage or another MedSup. Those would be creditable coverage um, that would waive the pre-ex. But just being on original Medicare does not. Okay, Part B excess. This one comes up a lot too. So as you probably all know, Part B excess is covered by Plan G. It is not covered by Plan N. <clears throat> and sometimes that'll keep people from selling a Plan N. And I just want to talk a little bit about the rules because the Part B excess charge is not nearly as much as people think. It's not really doesn't have that big of an impact. First of all, Part B excess can only be charged by doctors or providers that don't accept assignment. So if you've got a doctor fully participating, accepting assignment in Medicare, which is the majority of them, um, they can't charge excess. Only the ones who are in the program but not accepting assignment can charge excess. Excess is limited to 15% of the Medicare approved charges. There are states that don't allow excess at all, excess charges regardless of everything. Um, Minnesota, Vermont, Mass, New York, asterisks on New York, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. <clears throat> they don't allow excess at any time, so you don't have to worry about it, except for when they do. Um, New York is on the list for states that doesn't allow excess, but you can read right on the New York State Insurance Department website, they do allow five excess, just less, 5%. So, I mean, it is small, small potatoes, and remember, it can only be charged by doctors that aren't accepting assignment, but New York is kind of misleading. They say no excess, but they actually do allow a 5% excess charge. Let's see. And that is a duplicate side right there. Okay, there we go. So, all right, so with supplements, to get a lot of information, you really should use CSG to quote and compare plans. I mean, you can also quote on Sunfire or Connector. Uh, CSG, though, will give you quite a bit of detail when you want that type of detail. Like you can see, obviously, plan comparisons rates. Um, but you can see, you know, spousal and household discounts, and it'll give you the details. And you can on CSG click a button that will adjust the rates for those who have the spousal or household discount. I say spouse on household because some companies say you've got to have a spouse in the home and you can get the discount, or some companies say you and your spouse have to both be in, in our company's supplement to get the discount. Other plans say you just got to have somebody in the household that's 50, 50 years or older, age, uh, 50 years of age or older, and you can get the discount. So it's all over the board. You can see those rules, though, on CSG, and you can also see the amounts of discounts because it varies by company. To go to CSG and quote this, everybody who works with us has access. You can go to pfsinsurance.com. You will need a username and password. If you don't have one, you can 
you can call us or email us and we'll get it for you. Um, but you log in, you click on quotes, it's going to be at the top right hand, kind of 75, 80% off to the right at the top of the site. Click quotes um, and then just pick Medicare and quote Medicare supplement plans. And again, you can also on CSG, you can see rate history, meaning you can click on the rate history button and it'll show you what the renewals have been for that company because that's obviously a big consideration. Um, and you can do the same thing, I mean, on Connector and Sunfire. The limitation on Connector and Sunfire is it doesn't quote everything. Like, they don't have all the carriers. CSG will. But anyway, if you want to look at it on Connector or Sunfire, you can go to connectformedicare.com. Once you go there, then you choose your platform, Connector, Sunfire, Medicare Bot, Login, and Quote. You do need a username and password for each of those. So, again, everybody that works with us has it. You have access to all the platforms for free. I'll just call it and we'll call us and we'll provide it to you. Okay, that's it. Um, as I mentioned, I did a recorded webinar on oh, oh I did a recorded webinar on annuity rate watch. I'm gonna do one on accessing CSG. I got a little backed up today. I didn't put it up on YouTube yet, but it's gonna be again, same thing. I'll be pretending like there's people on, but it'll just be me recording a quick webinar on running through CSG and quoting plans. So if you haven't done it, I'll probably have that up by tomorrow. Um if you want to watch that, you go to at Crow Medicare or Google, you know, Google YouTube Crow and Associates. Um, we're going to send you out the link for the recording. And then a, one other thing is, for those working with us, we're doing a Zoom call today. It's I talk a lot less. It's very interactive. But I do have quite a few updates for the Zoom call at 2.30. Uh, if you want that call and you didn't get the registration link for it, just give us a call and we'll shoot it over to you. Um, that is it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, let's see if we have any questions. I think we have a couple. All right, yeah, we had that one. Is this webinar live? Yes, confirming it's a live webinar. Um, okay, question is, everyone is GI for six months of being 65 and getting Part B. Does that mean a delayed Part B enrollee has, enrollee has GI even at the age of, say, 75? If so, how many months is that? It's six months as well. So the answer is yes, because they're not eligible for a supplement until they have Part B. So they're first eligible. Um, they have a six-month period once they get that delayed B. Uh, somebody said California is full commission for trial right and birthday rule. Again, thank you. And uh, that is an example of, you know, most states are not. Uh, that's an example of some states are. Uh, you really got to check with your local state. But, yeah, good point there. Um, somebody said our... Are, it seem, somebody said it seems that a lot of the supplements are not available on Connection and Fun, Sunfire. True. It has the kind of the big guys, so to speak, um, but there's a bunch missing on there. Um, so if you really want to see a comprehensive list of what's available, go on the pinnacle site and, and quote through CSG. I agree. Good point. Good questions. Do we have any more? Be happy to answer them. Okay, well, it looks like that's all we have, unless something pops up here last second. Um, Okay, well, I appreciate you coming on today. Uh, again, we're going to do the Zoom meeting at, at 2.30, uh, much more interactive where everybody can ask questions and we kind of go back and forth. I think, I think they're pretty helpful. Um, and other than that, hopefully we will be able to schedule a webinar for next week. If you have any suggestions for topics, would love to uh, hear them from you. Thank you for attending, and I hope everybody has a great day. Thank you.